threat indicators. As a matter of fact, it was the, it was the contrary. It indicated, uh, for, for the most part, that those people were trying to render aid to that individual, which, again, as an intelligence officer, they could have monitored that van. They could have followed it. And as, as you see in the video, U.S. forces show up within minutes of the incident to secure the area. The idea Colonel should have Schaefer, been, stay there. Long yeah. segment coming up. Let's get your conclusion on this and then talk right. about the nature of modern warfare, period, straight ahead. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way, and you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for SurvivalSeedBank.com. Hi, folks. This is Alex Jones, and I want to tell you about the Silver Lungs Generator. Now you can produce pure and endless colloidal silver and deliver the solution directly into the bloodstream by breathing the solution through the lungs. The respiratory system is the first line of defense for airborne pathogens and viruses. The Silver Lungs Generator infuses the respiratory system with your cell-produced nanosilver solutions and also delivers the silver nanoparticles instantly into the bloodstream. With continued legislation threatening the sale of nanosilver products, you can now produce pure and endless colloidal silver with the Silver Lungs Generator. Very easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions are provided making production fast and simple. Go to www.silverlungs.com today and learn more about the breakthrough technology of the Silver Lungs Generator. That's www.silverlungs.com. You may be arrested and or subject to other police action. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secret of world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Well, our trusted Bilderberg sleuth, Jim Tucker, has discovered and confirmed the city it is to be in in Spain. He'll be joining us coming up in the next hour, for the next 25 minutes. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer is our guest. And you can check out uh, the website, c4ads.org. He's got a new book coming out very soon uh, that's going to have a lot of new revealing information about how the Army was stopped from killing bin Laden and other senior leadership of al-Qaeda in the months and weeks before 9-11. And, of course, when he tried to testify in closed session to Congress about this, he later got persecuted for it, but that was proven to be a fraud. And so he's with us today. Look, uh, uh, Colonel, they can say yeah. that this is the rules of war. People get killed. It's a war zone. But you talk about adrenaline. It's something more than that. 
Uh, because, you know, I've seen old gun pod footage of fighter pilots in Vietnam. They weren't giggling right. and snickering and, 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 and you know, right. uh, this bloodlust. And we see footage of some of the troops. It's, it's a minority, uh, you know, getting off on shooting dogs or throwing dogs off cliffs. They've two, three, four tours, something a military right. has never been forced to do. You know, some of these guys are coming back and are completely bonkers. But I think for the average citizen to see uh, the uh, these gun pod uh, footage shows them what is an everyday you know thing going on out there and and the way people are now disconnected from what soldiers for thousands of years have faced killing their enemy right up looking them in the eyes and we see the ground troops show up and they show empathy for the children that are in the uh, minivan that's been shot to right. hell and 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 then you right. hear uh, the helicopter pilot and the gunner say ah it shouldn't be in a war zone and uh, so the, so we see not just the people on the ground being dehumanized but we see the people in the helicopters being dehumanized well, I agree with you. And this is one of those things where, um, again, if I were the commander and I witnessed that, those those soldiers would have been relieved on the spot because, like I said, that is, that is exactly the point. That, that, that all combat, especially the, the, the people I've been in combat with, do not conduct themselves in that manner. You, you, anytime you have to take a life, it, it, you need to re be reverent in the fact that you are doing it. And um, as you mentioned my book, The Dark Side of the Force, is coming out uh, later this year, in the last, last day of August. And, you know, one of, the, one of the first incidents in that book I talk about, my, my first combat convoy, I have to make a choice about shooting or not shooting an eight-year-old eight kid who throws a sun, uh, sun juice uh, empty box in front of the, the, the vehicle in front of me. And I, and I would have been right to shoot the kid by the rules of engagement, but I didn't. And this is one of those things that was a win-win for, for, for the Taliban. If I shot the kid, that's good because, you know, we shot a kid and that's, that's a score for them. And if I didn't shoot him, that makes me less, less likely to shoot a kid next time if he does have a bomb in his hand. So this is the nature of modern warfare. It's one of those things where there's no right answers, but if you pick the right, if you pick the wrong answer, it's going to be hurtful no matter what. And let's not kid ourselves. Uh, this is a war of images. A war of information. And, and you know, you have Infowars.com. That is a brilliant way of displaying information relating to what is really going on. This is one of those things, Alex, we have to be better than the adversary. If you recall, they, the, the Taliban came out with a 29 point uh, code of conduct last year uh, done by uh, Al Badadar, who was actually wrapped up recently because he became too pro uh, negotiating for his own good with the Pakistanis. So, um, we will never see the Taliban actually execute their operations in conjunction with that 29 point, uh, I'm sorry, 69 point uh, uh, code of conduct. This is where we're better than they are. And frankly, this is one of the points I'd like to say. I'm, I'm not speaking for the Army, but the Army and the, the DOD is actually going to relook this now because it's the right thing to do. We need to look at the circumstance of why, why was it the soldiers were so apt to shoot that day? Clearly, it's, it's not only a training issue. It's a psychological issue. And let's not forget, Alex, that we have record number of suicides from post-traumatic stress. I think this is why you're seeing such a great number of post-traumatic stress issues, because people are not doing the right thing necessarily. Commanders are obligated to train, equip their, their soldiers to win, but then also they're responsible for holding them back, because as you point out, through our history, we have been better than this. We, we, we're obligated to try to pull people back. And don't, we also have Vietnam. We had the My Lai, the May Lai uh, massacre. So we have had a record of, of, of people going off the reservation. I'd like to believe that's the exception. But we've got to be better about the way we conduct modern warfare because things like this do matter. And it shapes the al-Qaeda battle space. This, this, this video will help al-Qaeda recruit. And we, we both know that. Okay, let's expand on this, though. Take a movie like Apocalypse Now with Colonel Kurtz, who's gone completely insane. And so the military sends out a, a special operator, uh, you know, to kill him. Captain Miller, right. And, but now I read John Yu memos, I read Alberto Gonzalez memos, guys that have never been in the military, never been in combat. And they're right. saying we can crush children's genitals, we can torture children. The military's given this. The Pentagon hires uh, jail guards and people who've been fired from federal jails for abuse. Uh, General Tagumbo's own report says raping children, raping people with acid. I mean, this is in the Army report. Far worse That's than those good. images. Why on right. earth would, would the Pentagon accept directives from the Bush White House, knowing that once this was implemented, this would absolutely destroy morale and turn us into the Nazis in the eyes of the world. 
Well, I think that's the answer. The, 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 the answer to your question is within your question. Um, I think a lot of those policies were established for retribution more than actual intelligence collection. The Army put out a policy a few years ago saying we will follow uh, a very strict regi uh, regimen of, 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 of basically techniques, non-intrusive, non non-violent techniques to, to break people. Uh, again, I cite for you my book. There, there's, a, there's two chapters about uh, an FBI special agent and I working to, to interrogate and break. I mean, we didn't touch him once, but within three days we were able to break him by use of really good investigative and interrogation techniques. Not, and I think, based on my experience, you can get people to talk. You don't